G'day guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, firstly, let me apologise, it's been a hell of a long time since uh, I've done one of these. I used to do them quite frequently, but truthfully, uh, life, uh, moving around, moved three times in the last year, uh, all due to work purposes. I'm shooting a ton of real estate, ton of weddings, um, everything is just fantastic. But one thing that I'm really pissed off about myself is that I really slowed down on all of these uh, tutorials because I know a lot of people really used to love them and get into them. So I am really sorry. Um, I'm going to do my best today to kind of make up for that and hopefully I can continue to do these because um, the, the people are always requesting and um, I, I feel as if I have helped a lot of people over time just like every online tutorial has always helped me. So. Uh, without further ado, I won't take up any more of your time. Today we're going to talk about specifically um, automotive retouching. This is just a style that I do too. This was a photograph that I put up on Facebook um, about a day or two ago, and look, it's had some, it's had some, um, uh, some really good responses to it. A lot of people loved it. Not only is it a beautiful car, um, I lit this in a specific way that I really. Th thought that I helped this pop. It's a really beautiful uh, blue VK Commodore and um, basically the questions were how did you do that? How did you get all the back, back garages lit up? How did, is that a, a new sky that you've dropped in? Um, is it HDR? All of those kind of questions. Look essentially no, this is uh, this is just a single light image but when I say single light it's, it's one single light that's been used to light the entire composition, the entire background, the interior, the internal uh, the internal external of the car, um, but just composite photography, that's, that's essentially it all, all it is. I mean, I've learned over the last few years um, that compositing is uh, an unbelievable tool. It's really, really fun. It takes a while to get your head around it, but that's what I'm going to try and do in this one. Um, so, uh, I don't class myself as an automotive photographer. I take all these um, ideas that I get from other forms of photography, real estate and weddings, and I, could, and I try to combine them all together. So. Um, Hopefully all these tips that I go through will work through a lot of the other shots. I use the same sort of technique uh, on this Mustang. I use the same sort of technique on, um, I'm trying to find some of these other ones, are burnouts. Um, same sort of technique on, on this one. This is one of my first photographs about five years ago or something like that. It's such an old photo. I look at it now and I would have done it completely different. But, you know, you just, you just every single day you learn and you learn. Um, I'll also hopefully go over, I don't want to go too too long in this in this um, tutorial, but this was a rig shot of the same car, same compositing technique, but also just done on a proper rig setup, and I've removed the rig, so a lot of people had that question as well as to how the hell do you get rid of that pole, so that can be a bit tricky and a bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, let's just jump into it. Um, as I said, I haven't done a tutorial in quite a long time, so hopefully you guys can bear with me while I go over um, certain things. I might model them up or mix them up. So hopefully just bear with me and I'll, I'll show you everything that I possibly know in this. Some people do it a different way, um, but this is just the way that I do it. So anyway, let's jump on over into Lightroom. So basically these are all the photographs that we're going to be using. So let's let's just clean these up a little bit. So I'm going to select all the ones that we showed on the day. Uh, keyboard shortcut on Windows and Mac is B for the quick collection. That basically just sorts all your photographs into a library. And we can have a look through these. So let's just get the thumbnails a little bit larger. Actually, let's jump into develop. That'll give you a, a clean idea. So what's the first thing I do on any automotive shot or almost almost anything that's stag that's that's still that's not moving? So whether it be um, landscape, houses, automotive um, that is still like this, uh, basically anything that's that's not moving, I do a bracket of usually six, seven photographs. So I started underexposed all the way through to overexposed, might be two stops, might be three stops either way. Um, and obviously a metered shot in the middle. So why do I do that? One, we're not shooting film and it doesn't cost us anything. Two, it gives us the entire um, basically histogram and light level and exposure range that we could possibly, possibly need. Uh, that's good, we may not use it, but it's always good to have it there if we need a photograph. Instead of bumping, instead of having one exposed image and then smashing it all the way to five stops over or five stops under and one raw image, we've got images that have been correctly exposed in camera. So that's the first step. Some people don't do that, I like to do that just so I've got the photographs. You know, it's, we're shooting uh, digital, it's not going to cost us anything. Second step is this entire sequence of images was all shot on one single flash. But firstly, it wasn't a speed light, it was a, a wireless monoblock or a mono light, which is essentially a studio light that's lithium powered, 680 watts of power, so it's got a, the equivalence of about 10 speed lights. So it is a, a huge difference in, compared to a normal speed light. It's got a wider 
uh, wider spectrum, wider range of light in terms of its spread, and it's got a lot more power. So 680 watt seconds is quite powerful. A lot of studio lights that are powered, elect like powered into the AC, have the same level of light. Um, so, as I said, first step is all my bracketed images. I will bracket those. Make sure you're on a sturdy tripod because if you bump it halfway through, you're pretty screwed. Um, you can do image alignments and things like that, but it's a headache you don't have to deal with. Okay, f so first thing is bracket image. Then I'll go through and I will essentially, this is a flash, a flash sequence. Um, and I essentially just move around the car and light it from every possible angle, trying to keep the reflections down. Again, nice, beautiful blue VK Commodore here, and uh, blue is a really good color to shoot. I've got a black vehicle myself, I've got a, a V sports wagon, and it's a beautiful car, but it is such a pain in the ass to shoot due to its black. It sucks up the light, and it's also got a lot of reflections that come from that. So um, I always tend to get up high and shoot down, that way the flash isn't going to have a reflection in, the, in, in any of the bodywork. And I'm just moving around, you can basically see me just lighting this from every possible angle. You may not use all of these, but same with the bracket comment, you just you just shoot as many as you possibly can, that way you can, you can use them or not use them later on. Uh, again, just lighting it from the sides, lighting it from the back, I've got the interior lights, so that was a flash directly in there, it's a little bit bright but we can pull that back later. And obviously, I start moving into the shed. This was a key thing that a lot of people picked up on and said, how the hell did you light the back of that? You know, did you have four or five different speed lights? No, I didn't. All I did was basically just go through and light this individually each time. I'm, I'm at F16 ISO 200, 180 per second. So the background's probably two stops underexposed. And that works well because it gives me um, the the the, lens, the light really pops out. So they, these are all our photographs here, just flipping through them all. This is what we're going to use. This is a key thing to automotive um, or compositing in general is just having these really nice, uh, nicely defined flash images that really get to pop out. So it's good that we've got all these photos, but where the hell do we go from here? Um, you know, I think it's pretty important that we we do something with all these. So let's uh, let's start putting it together. Um, all of this is going to be done in between Lightroom and Photoshop, but I'm going to use this as a base image. So this basically means um, all the other photographs are going to be composited around this. So let's go. Let's get started. Uh, computer's doing a few things at the moment. Uh, images are being sent overseas, and all kind of stuffs happening. So hopefully it's going to run uh, fairly smooth, and hopefully uh, the audio doesn't cut out because I know the wireless mic I'm using. Uh, the battery is fairly low, but let's hope that it stays on. Alright, let's jump back into Photoshop, and this is our base image. So we're not going to do anything with this just yet, other than unlock it. So double click on the background image, and then just click OK. Now we're going to jump back over into Lightroom, and let's go to a first kind of base image for a, uh, a flash composite. And I'm thinking this one, um, I reset that, I was playing around with it a little bit before. This is the base image here. Let's drop that down just a touch. Let's pull the highlights back. I'm mainly looking at the bodywork and the color. So the flash really brings out a nice blue. Um, but the key thing here is that you want any image in flash compositing, because we're going to be using blending, um, blending and screen modes. You want any image that you're overlaying on your base image to be brighter. And I'll show you why in a second. So this image, we don't want to pull back too far. We want to leave a little bit of highlights and things in there. But this is going to be our base image. So what I'm going to do is right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And let's jump over back into it. Again, apologies, it's loading up, loading up, loading up. And that's our flash image there. So what I'm going to do is hit V for the move tool. Let's grab this and pull this straight over into this into our document here. Hold down Shift and release, and you can see we now have the two layers. There we go. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do first thing is let's close this document down because we're going to have a few in there. Let's close that down. What I used to do is I used to throw a layer mask on and then hit the brush tool and then start to paint this detail back in. You can see already that that starts to that starts to look better, mainly because the flash really gives it a nice colorful pop. Um, it brings out it brings out the details and the colors a little bit better, but we're not going to use a layer mask in this sense. What I'm going to do to start with is just put this blending mode through to lighten, and all that's done is that's just put all the brighter areas of the image on top to see through. So again, it's just it just works with transparency and things like that. It just sees the 
the areas of the image above that are brighter and that's going to allow them to bleed through. I am going to put a layer mask on this one and I'm going to ditch this floor here. So getting a black brush and painting that away. I don't need any of this stuff on here. Again, the beauty of working on a layer mask is that you can um, obviously paint it all back in when you need to. But the key thing for this one to me is just getting the car to pop out. So there we go. Uh, just hitting the backslash button or whatever it is directly under the delete button on, on a Mac. Um, that, that sees the kind of what, what you've painted in and what you haven't. I don't know what the actual keyboard name of that is, but whatever it is. Uh, this is just going around and seeing areas that I've been a bit sloppy on. Don't need the sky, I can ditch that. And we can ditch most of that as well. Because I am doing this quite quickly, I am just gonna go back through here and get a couple of these areas. Looking a little bit more natural. Again, the key thing to this tutorial is not to be 100% spot on, but be as accurate as I possibly can in the time constraints that we have. I don't want to hold you guys up for, you know, 35 or 40 minutes because that's quite quite a long tutorial. But I'm doing my best to show you everything that I know. Some people do this a different way, but this is the way that I do it and I seem to like it. All right, cool. So as you can see straight away, huge huge difference. I can still see a few spots here on the floor that I've missed. Fix that up. On, off, on, off, on, off. Few spots over here. Bam, that's made a big difference already. Okay, let's go to, to the next stage. Just back over into Lightroom and let's jump across. Uh, so down towards the back, I've lit the back of the car a little bit more. If we jump back into Photoshop, it's a little bit dark down there. The front's kind of popping too much. So let's go back down and let's jump over in. Uh, let's just put a little bit uh, a little bit more light down there. So uh, which image have we got? So that one there is gonna work, I think. That one there, yeah. So highlights, let's bring those back just a little bit. Let's bring the blues back and that is giving us a much more even shot. Again, right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Um, most of my work for uh, weddings is done in Lightroom, but automotive, I, I tend to find myself always in between Lightroom and Lightroom and Photoshop. I mean, the two of them bridge up both perfectly together. Uh, compositing stuff like this, you can do it in Lightroom, but it's a hell of a lot harder. Um, anyway, shift, hold down, drop that on, let's go normal, lighten, there we go, bang, so that's letting a few things come through. A couple of things that we don't need, let's drop that down opacity just a touch, but it is getting the back of the car to be a bit brighter. So again, I'm actually going to put another mask on this and start to paint away some of the stuff on the floor that I don't necessarily want. <clears throat> Again, just bear with me guys, I'm going through this super, super quick. Obviously, I could have just inverted that that mask and then painted the back of the car, um, but that's that's I just didn't do that then. Instead of having to paint away the entire floor and stuff like that, but you can see what that's done. That's just really popped out the um, the back of the car, and it's throwing the shadow and stuff on that side there that we don't need. So let's go ahead and let's get rid of all that stuff there. Let's ditch it, ditch it, ditch it, ditch it. Again, it would have been a smarter move for me to actually invert that, but I didn't, but I promise I'll do it next time. Where else have we got? We've got some lighting on the floor here that we don't need. We'll bugger that off. We've got some stuff up in the sky. Sky doesn't really matter at the moment. We're going to fix that up later on. And we've got these reflections that I don't necessarily want. Let's bugger those right off. 
So I'm actually with the brush, I'm going to drop the opacity down so it's not as dominant. There we go, something like that. It's looking pretty good. I'll probably just make it a little bit less. Let's go to 30% and over the top and down like that. Cool. So it's good to have some sort of reflections in there at stages. Um, you don't want to remove everything because it starts to starts to look too fake. I'm going to remove that, remove that. Again, this this light mode, it really is it really is a cool way to do it. Um, I've done it previously by just doing a complete mask, and it's a, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but anyway, that's working well for me. All right, uh, let's move on. Now, the front of the car is just a little bit dark again, so let's drop. Let's drop an exposure up, maybe, maybe that one, it's a bit bright, but let's pull the information back, the highlights and the whites, and let's bust those blues out just a touch more. So you can see the front of the car is lit quite well there, again edit in Photoshop. Uh, so this is the process, it's not terribly fast, but it is fun if you're um, sitting around, have a few beers and get into this stuff and, and it can be quite fun. So again, I'm going to drop this into our master composition there, hold down shift, uh, lighten, so that's going to let the rest of the car bleed through and you can see it's just lighting the edge there. So what I'm going to do now is hold down alt, um, alt or option, whatever, whichever one you want, uh, and that's going to invert the layer mask. And what I can do now is just get a brush tool, let's get into some finer detail and just go bang, bring the exposure up, probably 80%, and that's really going to start to get rid of some of those harsher shadows and get a little bit more colour in there. So as I'm going to continue to mention, there are plenty of different ways that you can retouch um, automotive cars. I don't like that light there. I'm going to get rid of that. And I don't like that there. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, again, all of these layers are working together. You can see when I start to kill them, what happens. You can see when I start to kill that one, you can see what happens. You know, certain images are, uh, are lit. And it is important to have the same power output on your flash. Um, Flash power is never adjusted by shutter speed, only your aperture and your ISO. So always make sure that your aperture and your ISO is the same as you're walking around the car. Try to have the same distance from the car so the flash output is going to be the same. Um, and obviously you're just lighting every single area individually. So I can see a bit of a muck up on this one. This, I'm getting like a glow on the edge of this wall over here. So let's bugger that right off. And I can go over the car because it's not actually um, that's the car layer there, and I'm working on this one. So I can get rid of that, and... That one, I've got a bit of a spill over here and here. How you going, guys? You bored yet? Hopefully not. My audio is still working. Sweet. I hope the audio doesn't cut out. Excellent, that's looking pretty cool. So you can see that's just the front of the car there. It's only a small proportion of it, but it uh, makes a big difference. It kind of really um, separates it from the background. So cool, that's looking good. Uh, what else do I like? Let's jump into, let's actually go back to a photograph like this. We've got, I've, I like the lighting on the wheels in this one. So um, yeah, let's, let's try this. Let's pump up the clarity a little bit. Let's pump up the exposure just a little bit. Let's lighten those shadows up. And this is going to be one solely for the wheels. So I want to jump over. Uh, yeah, edit a copy of that is fine. I want to jump back over into Photoshop. And this is just going to be uh, just for the wheels. I just want the wheels to have a little bit more contrast, a little bit more clarity to them. Uh, and this should help us out. So I drop that over. I'm not going to use lighten on this one. I'm just going to use a direct layer mask, but I'm going to invert it. So I'm hiding everything. 
And with the brush tool, I'm gonna to come back onto this wheel and just go bang, start to paste that back in. So it's actually gotten rid of a lot of the shadows and that's exactly what I wanted. Um, yeah, it just looks a lot more punchy and the wheel, it kind of has like a wet look to it, which is always good. You gotta love things that are wet, if you know what I mean. Ha 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 ha. Sorry about that, guys. I hope there's no girls watching this video. And the brush tool, I'm just gonna get rid of that. That, 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 that. So this is just for the wheel. Yeah, that looks way better. I've basically gotten rid of this light that's spilled into that one there and just going bang, it really kind of crunched that up. So that's all from clarity and just the way that the light was positioned. It's gonna be basically the same on this back wheel here. Just get that in, it's looking nice and sharp. Bit more definition on the wheels and sweet, looking good. Make sure not to spill. Always flip between um, your white and black brush. That's basically just going to hide everything and show it, whatever you want to be hidden. There we go. Those are the wheels looking way better. It looks, it, it looks more aggressive to me, 100%. Sweet. So, where are we up to? Um, the ground is all lit pretty well here. Um, but it does kind of look like I don't know, the ground kind of looks like it's a little bit flat, isn't it? You know, it's obviously been lit and there's no shadows or anything on the ground. So let me see if I can find an image that's got like a shadow to it. Um, I want a little bit more, I want something a little bit more interesting on the ground. So a shot like that, I like, yeah, I kind of like how this one's got, let's reset this actually, because that had some adjustments made to it. But I'm going to pump the clarity up. I kind of like the lighting on this ground. Now remember, this is this is all uh, working with the lighting layer that I can drop over the top of it, and that's going to bleed through. So let's let's jump this in. This this image is going to be directly for the floor. Uh, I quite like the shadow that's come over onto this wall there. So we'll see what it looks like. Again, I did do this completely different in the other um, in the other photograph, but I used the same techniques and the same style. So. Uh, bringing this across into here, hold down shift, let's let that go, let's go to lighten mode, and that's just, yeah, that's cool. So you can see what it's done. By going back to normal, obviously everything changes, a lot of the darker area stuff come through, but I just want the lighter area, so I just want um, everything that's lighter than the actual current image to, come, to bleed through. So lighten, that lets everything come through, and I don't need this reflection, so, Put a layer mask on here, use a brush tool, and let's bugger this reflection right off, and it's gone. And it's gone. Anyone like South Park? I like South Park. Cool. So that adds some more light, that adds some more dimension to the um, to the to the ground and you can see exactly what's that done. And it hasn't it hasn't affected anything else. It hasn't gone on to the wheels or anything, all because our lame master here are working into our favour. Uh, that's looking good. I'm just gonna probably drop down this background just a touch. I don't think we necessarily need that because we are gonna work with that later on. So again I can go over the top of the car here because that's all masked out. Boom, 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 boom. Those lights are gone. Excellent. Sweet. Lay miles are the best. They really do help. Again, we're going to fix up this, fix up that sky a little bit later on. So in this section of the car here, it looks a little bit flat in terms of the contrast. So what area is that? That's not the wheels, the wheels. We've got that, we've got that, we've got that one there. There you go. That's a culprit. So lay a mask and let's fix up this area here. See that? That was just a little bit of, because uh, the image was a little bit brighter, that's just bled through. So always feel free to go through and look over your images. You'll sp turn them on and off. The eye, the eye tool, by turning them on and off, you will spot so many small imperfections. Uh, I like the rest of the highlights. That's all good. Let's go back out. Look at that. We're getting there. That's looking awesome. Um, 
yeah, make sure never ever to crop until the very end because you can change your angles and things like that. And if you want to do something later on, you go to drop an image over the top of it and it's not lined up correctly. So never crop until the very end until you're finished with everything. Then you can flatten it and then crop it and then turn it into JPEG and share it to the world. Cool. Uh, where are we up to next? Um, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't think we need any of these photographs for this one. That's just, uh, it's going directly onto the back wall there. Don't need that. We've got our exposure to the sweet. Uh, interior light. Yeah, sweet. Let's start with this one. I'm just going to bring this directly. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the highlights a little bit because it is quite bright in there. Only worry about this area. I'll show you exactly why. I don't worry about the sky. This is the only part. This is going to be the brightest part in the image. So all we have to do is change the screen mode to, blight, to brighten and it's going to do all the hard work for us um, rather than having to go through and lay a mask it and do all that boring crap. So jump back into Photoshop. And here we go, this image there, and we just go bang straight onto the original images. Let me just quickly, I want to put that at the top down. So I want to quickly close these ones to give us a bit more working space in our dock. And all we need to do is go bang, lighten. And that's done honestly all the work for us. That's just the interior light, that's all you need. Again, flash is wicked in this area because you can use these layer, um, these layer style, these, well, these blending layers to your advantage. Uh, I'm just going to put a layer mask on that because I don't need this falling onto the edges here. And bang, that is the interior light. I did have one at the back as well. These are quite dark windows. And this was the rear shot there. Again, pull the exposure down like that. Pull the whites. Edit in Photoshop. Waiting, 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 waiting. <clears throat> Drag and drop, that and a light turn. There we go. So that's just turned on a little bit more detail in there, and that's wicked. I love it. I don't know what you think, but I really like it. Cool beans. So, what have we got next? We've got the sky. The sky is a little bit flat. It's not too bad there, but I want it to be a little bit more punchy. So, what do we do? We're going to go all the way back to the original brackets. Light room. Let's go right back to the start. Bang, 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 me dancing around. And where are our brackets? So right at the beginning of this collection. And let's have a look at that one there. So I'm going to adjust this image. I'm going to pull the... I'm going to pull the highlights down. I'm going to pull the whites down. Sorry, Lightroom does this after a while. It starts to flip. If, if you work between the two, sometimes you can click on it, etc., and it will jump back in. Uh, I want to bang those vibrance up. It's making the adjustments, but it's just jumping back into Photoshop because it's being a bitch. And that's cool. I'm going to right click and edit in Photoshop. So that's just kind of a deeper blue um, as opposed to this image here where it's more or less the same exposure as the sky. So I don't mind that surprisingly. I mean, that, that's, that's actually that's a really clean style to it. But let's see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and drop this image on there. Let's drop that over the top. Um, I am just going to turn that off for the... Actually, no. What I'll do is let's let's do an outline. So let's grab the pen tool and let's go bang right on this corner. Right to... Okay, the, the doors aren't exactly even. So well, the roof doesn't seem to be perfectly even. So let's go from there to there and from there to there. From there to there, from there to there, and then to there. Straight down, straight onto this roof here, to there, and straight out into that. Let's make a selection. I don't want it to be any feathering. Let's go zero. And what I'm going to do is invert that mask actually let's just do a normal mask on it and there we go bang that's just made that sky a little bit darker 
You know what? It's too dark, so let's go to 75, 50%. So that's the exact same sky, but I've just added a little bit more, uh, a little bit more information to that. And I'm also going to make a small curves adjustment just on that layer, and then that looking a little bit more punchy. There we go, bang. So to me, that just looks a little bit better. Cool. So we could have dropped a new sky in there if we had the texture, but who wants to muck around with that crap? Anyway, let's go back into Lightroom and let's go across to, let's do the garage door. This was a big thing for most people to say, how the hell did you get all those lights on the back doors? So I'm gonna show you. I've got, where is it start? That one there, that's the first shot. Guys, this is pretty easy. Um, if ever you wanna have a little, like better lighting, more dramatic lighting, do exactly what I'm about to show you because this is, this is piss easy. Um, I used to go through and manually mask it all out and it was just a pain, but these days after learning that what the lighten button does, drop it on top, lighten, bang, and that's done. So only thing we need to do is just, you can just hit the eraser tool and just erase the sky because the small areas are going to come through on the sky and we've already adjusted that. So that one is done, that's, that's, that's it, that's all you need to do. I mean if you light it a certain way, a correct way, it's going to come through. Let's go to the next one, that one there. Edit in Photoshop. You guys still with me? We're getting there, we're almost done. It's looking pretty good. It's looking almost better than the first time I did it. Uh, so I'm racing through, I think it's you guys. You're giving me moral support. Lighten, look at that again. Eyes on and off, we can see that it's bled through onto the background. Get the eraser tool, E. We don't need to mask it because we don't really care. There we go, bang, that's just lit that one up. And you guys get the idea, but we're going to keep on going for the sake of it. We're going to finish this. We've got to finish the race. So think about this, you can use this technique in any way. If you've got a, um, a landscape image and you want the trees to be lit up and you can do some cool shit, as long as the flash is brighter than your base images, it will bleed through with this lighting technique. Um, just like that. Cool, and next one. I did light these doors a little bit differently um, compared to the previous ones, mainly because I was running backwards and forwards with the camera and I was starting to get, you know, a little bit thirsty for a beer, so I wanted to get out of there. Um, but I could have lit the doors better, but this is kind of probably one of the first times that I've really done it. I knew what the idea was and I knew how it worked, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it the same um, on every single door, so, but you get the idea. I'm just removing the skies, making it darker again, getting that in, looking sweet. And last door. I wish I should have lit all of them directly like I had that one because it's got that kind of triangle light and it's just on the door, but what do you do? I did my best. Try not to bash me for it. How are we going? I don't know how long this has gone for yet, but, um, Hopefully it's not going too long and you're still hanging in there with me. Back in Photoshop, V tool, move it to our master document, drop, image, lighten, that shows through all our previous work. There we go, bang, 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 cool. That one, drop up the top there, and that's got a bit on the sky again, so just erase that sky. Getting that to look nice and contrasted again. Sweet. Um, you know what, that looks Pretty good to me. Ah, ah, we've got to do one thing. New layer. We're gonna do the headlights. That's new document. Sorry, guys. Uh, Shift Command New New Layer. Headlights are here. Fill it with black. Let's go D. Let's gonna alternate our colors. That's white. Alternate D. Filter. We are going to go to da -da 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 -da, render lens flare. We're gonna choose a 105 prime. We're going to put it on this angle there because on our document that's pretty much where the headlights were but it's aiming the wrong way so let's change it and let's have it like think about where the car was positioned like that we're going to click ok 
we're going to click the layer mode and we're going to put that to screen. We're going to get this, we're going to put it on the headlight. But you go, whoa, 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 what's going on on the edges there? You can see it like a square document. We're going to hit Command M, it's going to bring up our curves. We're going to put some contrast in there and that's going to soften out and really show through the light. Sweet. Preview before and after. Bang, looking good. Uh, we are going to duplicate that document, put it in this corner over there, get the transform, make it a little bit smaller, and that is a cheap and dirty way to do the headlights. The headlights on this on this car are those halogen bloody orange ones, and they look shouts. We're going to merge those two layers. It's going to need us to screen it again. Screen. There we go. Bang. Those are our headlights there, and then probably a bit too bright. Let's drop them down a touch. That's looking. That's looking better. That makes a world of difference. Otherwise, you just got that flat looking headlight there. There you go. That gives you a little bit more color. Uh, not color gives you a little bit more dimension, I guess. Um, to me, I think that's. That's looking pretty good. You know what I'm going to do? On the previous image, I did extend the garage out, but I basically CBF can't be doing it. On this one, you get the idea. I did extend the garage out so you couldn't see that red house, but this one's cool. All right, I'm going to commit. I'd usually save this as a PSD, but I don't need to because I do have a separate document. Um, actually, you know what? The hell with it. Let's, let's save it. Let's save it for the sake of saving it. Uh, jobs, cars, some of the cars, VK. Rig, garage, and PSD, VK underscore retouch, save. It's going to be quite a large document because of all the layers and stuff, but um, what I'm going to do now, as soon as this is finished saving, I'm going to, I'm going to merge all these layers, I'm going to change the angle of the car a little bit, I'm going to do a final vignette, and that's pretty much it. I think I've gone quite along on this one, so hopefully this has given you an understanding of how I do my photographs. Um, some people do, do them a different way, some people do them the same way. It really depends, it's totally up to you. So you guys, uh, let me know what you think, I really appreciate some feedback. Let me know if you, you, know, if you think I can do it better, or if you like the idea, or if you're going to give it a go yourself. Um, but yeah, just remember, uh, just light the car, and use those, light, light the car in a specific way, have the car uh, about a stop under expose and then use the flash to fill it in and surround the car with the light on separate shots. This just goes to show that you do not need a studio setup. Um, you don't need to have 13 or 14 lights to do this. You could do it and it would be great, but it'd probably be harder realistically if you were to have that um, were to have that setup. I'm, I'm, a firm, I'm a firm believer of um, you know straight out of camera shots and I do love them and I love people. I love a photographer that can go out there and get an absolute bang on image straight out of camera. But truth, truth is, these days, if you, got, if you want to compete with all the other commercial and advertising photographers or automotive photographers or wedding or landscape or, or um, you know, commercial or friggin' real estate, whatever it may be, um, they, all, they all retouch. That's, that's just the, the industry standard these days is to know how to, to retouch a, um, a photograph and retouch it well. So... Uh, sorry about the saving process, guys. Do bear with me. It's just at 55% there. I shouldn't have saved it. You know, I was just saving for the sake of it, but I've forgotten my computer's doing a few processes at the moment. Um, but just to keep the ball rolling, any other ideas, um, photographs that you've seen that you might like and I might like the retouching behind the scenes video on. This is the first one I have done in a long time. That's due to things just being a little bit crazy at work. Um, be sure to let me go. As I said, the last thing I'm going to do with this is merge all the layers, commit to it, do a small vignette, save it as a PSD, and boom, there you go. Come on, 68%. You guys can, if you're getting bored, you can, um, you can either skip the video forwards or you can listen to me just chill and talk and spin shit. So, how's about that weather? Went pretty good. Is everyone still shooting? I hope so. 75%. Come on, we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't mind me. I'm just going to finish the rest of this drink. I found a Cascade Premium Light full flavoured beer in my fridge, and it's the biggest piece of shit I think I've ever drank. It's 0 0.8 standard drinks. Rubbish. And it's 
Yeah, premium light. What the fuck do you expect, eh? Terrible. All right, we're done. We're done. Okay. Um, back to work. I'm going to merge all these layers. C Command E on Mac. And that's going to basically turn everything into one layer. Spooky, spooky. I'm going to... Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a new layer. I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to go from corner to corner. This is just my way of doing a vignette. I'm going to hit Command F6. I'm going to feather it to, say, 400 pixels. I'm going to inverse selection. I'm going to hit the Command Backspace. And I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 30%. So all that's done is I'll delete the select it. You can just see it's just drawing the attention towards the center of the frame. That's done. I can merge that again. I'm going to hit transform. Actually, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit crop. Make sure that's all done. Yep, sweet. Good to go. Why does the document say it's larger? Anyway, sweet. I'm going to hit transform. I'm going to make that out to be a little bit bigger. Let's put it on an angle. There you go. It's kind of looking like it's going uphill. A little bit more boss. And we'll make that a tiny bit smaller, I guess. <clears throat> and there you go. That's the quick and dirty way to retouching a photograph. Um, the Palamedia style, the Phil Ligeti style. So I hope you liked it. Um, and let me know your thoughts. Uh, if there's anything I can do better, any way you've got around it, give me a shout. Thanks for your time, guys. I'll see you again in another video soon. Adios.